What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. As you can see, we're not at the welding table today. We are actually at the computer, but we are going to be building something. I'm gonna show you how you can start drawing up your own laser cut, water jet, plasma cut, part designs yourself at no cost. So let's get started. I'm Justin Voss, thank you for being here. I make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube, so if you're new, I hope you stick around and subscribe if you're into that kind of stuff. If you at all have dealt with machine cut parts, whether that's plasma cut, laser, water jet, any of that, you realize how much of a time saver it can be, especially for repetitive tasks or really intricate things that you might not actually be able to do by hand. And uh, these are just some little laser cut brackets that would go like on a chassis or, you know, really anything. You Just for putting bolts in, you could double shear these if you had two of them. In the past, a lot of people will cut out a little cardboard template and send it to the laser cutter. But you can actually draw your own parts and have a lot more creative freedom over adjusting the design before it ever goes there. And you're going to save money by not having to pay for that design time at the service you're using. And if you have your own plasma table and you're thinking about getting one or any of the other cutting machines, then you would need to know this stuff anyway. But I am gonna show you how you can do it at no cost to you to get started and learn in a very powerful piece of software called Fusion 360 from Autodesk. I just recently found this and I've been digging into it and loving it. And I'm gonna show you how to quickly draw up a part. We're gonna do probably a gusset maybe for a roll cage then we will export that into a dxf that you can send to the laser cutting service water jet or plasma cutter any of those so let's hop on the computer and get into that all right here we are on the computer if you like my little overlay that's actually from my twitch stream when i go live on twitch i was actually on there the other night doing a fusion 360 project and learning it and uh someone in the chat was helping me out a lot so if you like twitch I'm at Just Boss on there. Now, to get started, you're gonna need Fusion on your computer. So we are going to head over to Google and you can just type in Fusion 360. It should be the top result. And right here is the main page for it. It says download free trial, subscribe. They have pricing for teams and organizations who are using this in a business setting, but if you're just at home, you can click on download free trial and then right here on the left you'll see personal use get one year free subscription so that allows you plenty of time to learn this uh, get lots of projects made think about if this is something you would want to pay for following that year because you're going to know the software well without ever having to pay for it so we're going to click on personal use and to download you just have to sign in or create an account and it recognizes that I've already downloaded and installed the application, but if you hadn't, you would hit download Fusion 360 right here. It would save to your computer, uh, whether you have a Windows PC or a Mac, depending on how you install it. Once you get it installed in the location that you want, we're gonna go ahead and launch it. If you've never opened it before, it's probably gonna ask you to sign in again, but then that'll be the only time you have to do that. It typically by default saves your projects and components online so you can access them from any computer anywhere now in fusion first thing we're going to do even though we're making a simple part is we're going to create a new component i just right clicked over here in the browser at the very top and hit new component you can also go to create new component it's going to be an empty component because we don't have anything made yet and you could select sheet metal component but you can always change that later it's not super important for what we're doing I'm gonna name this one Bracket. Now, as you can see, nothing happened. We're still just right at the beginning. We're gonna create a new sketch up here in the top left. Choose our plane. So this is the Y plane, this is the X plane. So that would be like your floor. And then this is the Z plane. That's going like straight up in the air. You can see if we look around this would be like the floor, and then these are vertical planes. We're going to select the bottom. 
and then it puts us on a straight top-down view. You can always see how you're looking because this is 3D software right up here in the top right. We don't want to get too complicated. We're just learning, just starting off, but this is our sketch area. This is our origin center. Now say I want to make a little gusset to go on a piece of roll bar. I'm new to this too, just learning, but I kind of want to show you how easy this is and that really anybody can learn it. The way I would do this is I'm going to create just a rectangle. You can click your first point and drag it however big you want to. It's also showing you the exact sizes. I know roll bar is typically an inch and three quarter OD, so we're going to need our gusset to fit over that. So we are going to type in on our width probably somewhere around two inches. And then we just hit tab, moves us to our next number, and we'll make it two also. We'll make it two and a half. So there's our basic shape. So now, it, obviously, it needs to be cut out to fit over the roll bar. So we'll create a circle, and it shows us an X because we are in the center. And same thing, I could drag and try and hit this perfect, or I can just, once I'm here and it's highlighted, I can type in for an inch and three quarter. I have my preferences set to inches, but by default, this will be set to millimeters. So you have to go up here, click on your name, and then once that opens up under default units, you'll want to change from millimeters to whatever you want to prefer or use if you like using millimeters. I'm thinking about switching to using millimeters actually, but right now I'm still familiar with inches. So I want everything to be in inches. We'll leave simulation on defaults because I don't use that that much. We're going to hit apply. So now we're in inches. So now we have our circle part where the roll bar can go in. And if we want to cut that out of there, hit our trim tool and just select the lines we don't want. And just like that, easy. Now we need a place for our bolt or whatever this bracket is holding to go. So we need another circle in the center. See, I can click, I'm not even clicking. I'm just hovering over the center and then pulling out. It's showing me that I'm still in line with it. If you need an exact location off of the edge or off of here, you can make a construction line just by hitting our line tool and say we know exactly off of the center or probably more realistically off of the top of the bar. We'll place that one part of our line and we'll go inch and a quarter off of it. Hit enter return to place that line. And then you can right click this and turn this into a construction line. So it's not actually part of our drawing or our part. Now we have exactly an inch and a quarter off the top of our roll bar and we can place our hole. Say we need a 3 8 hole. So while we're here in sketch, we still want to shape this a little bit closer to what we're actually going to need. So I kind of want to trim these corners off and lighten this bracket up a little bit. To do that, I'm going to draw a couple more construction lines. First, I know I probably want to start somewhere at the top of here. I'm right clicking it again and turning it into a construction line. And then I need some points to attach to up here. There's a bunch of ways you could do this. Could draw some construction lines over. You could just guess. Uh, I'm just going to make a circle. That way I can hit the center point. Come out maybe three quarters. Turn that into a construction line. And then now we can just take our line tool and go from our one construction line to this one. Same thing over here. Now we can delete the outer parts that we do not want anymore. I don't have to, but if I want to get rid of these construction lines, I can just go to select and delete them. And yeah, I think we're good for as far as the sketch goes. So now to turn this into a three dimensional object where we can see what our bracket actually looks like, all we have to do is come up here on the top and see we're under sketch menu, but we're going to change it to solid. 
and you can see we're still looking at the top down. So if we hit our home button or hold down shift and middle mouse to rotate, if I'm gonna hit the home button, you can see that we are on a plane here. Now I'm just holding down shift and my middle mouse button and I can orbit around in 3D space. So you can see our drawing is still flat, which would be fine. We could send it right to the laser cutter, but we wanna see what it looks like. So all we have to do is hit extrude click on the surface that we want to extrude and you can either just pull up to whatever you think looks good or we can actually type in our dimension here and we're going to do an eighth inch bracket here so there we go we have an eighth inch thick bracket now i mean the laser cutter or water jet or plasma cutter is doing all the work here so we might as well have this good and rounded and pretty much ready to go on whatever we're going to use it on you can easily round off all these corners just by simply hitting fill it right here. There's other modify options under the modify menu, but we just want fill it. We're gonna click it here and click this edge right where you would hit it with your grinder if you were gonna do this by hand. And then you can just pull in and see what you want. I would prefer a top view so I can kind of see what I got going on here. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking a half inch radius. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now our top's rounded over and we can do the same thing down here. Let's see what 0.5 looks like. Uh, we'll do two. I'm just hitting my middle mouse button and shift to pan around or orbit around my object. If I hold down just the middle but mouse button, it just pans. And we can hit our spot again, type in two. And there it is. I don't think I would round this over because you would probably weld this entire spot and then you know kind of wrap around and weld the back on whatever you're putting this on. Now, if we want to send this off to the cutters, we have to generate a DXF file. That's actually a file created by Autodesk, but it's a universal file. Almost all of the softwares that do cam related stuff can recognize it. And that way you can pass files around in a standard format. Fusion can actually run tool paths, but that's a whole nother advanced level. And you don't know if it's going to comply exactly with the machine that they have. So if you just want to simply send them a DXF and then they can create the tool runs, you do that by coming up here and hitting create sketch again. Now you can see nothing happened. It's going to have us select our plane and we are going to select the front face of our part. Once we have it like this, we're going to hit P for project. If you forget that, it's also under the create project, project, and it'll bring up this same menu. Once we have that, all we have to do is select our surface and hit OK. And it gave us a path around everywhere we want the cutter to go. If you don't want everything to be cut, I just undid that. I'm going to hit P again for project. You can select each edge that you actually want to be cut. So say you just want to cut around the outside and not cut the hole out. This is what you would do and then hit okay. And you would just have a path around the outside. But since we do want everything, we're back to P for project, clicking the main front surface, hitting okay. And now we have our paths. Now over here under our component, you're gonna to go to sketches and it's gonna have created a second sketch. That's what we're in right now, but you can, cause you can see it's highlighting that top surface. All you have to do to create a DXF that you can email to wherever it needs to go or send it off to your other software that controls your machine is right click it and go to save as DXF. Pick your location, save it, send it off and you're done. This could be a huge time saver if you learn how to do this, even for simple parts. Say you need 10 of these brackets cut out and then you have a 10 of another bracket and 20 of something else you need to cut out. Don't be afraid to call someone up and get a quote. If it's all out of eighth inch material, you can send them these files. 
they'll lay them out. It doesn't take them much work since you've already drawn everything up and they can cut it all out as one run. You'd be surprised on how small of a job that they are willing to do when you can just hand them the files. This also gives you a lot of design control over your parts. And Fusion 360 is so powerful, we barely even scratched the surface of it here. And the more you start to learn it, you could take your components, put them together, see how they're gonna fit before you actually send off anything to get made. And the best part is if you sign up for that personal account, you have one year to mess with this software, learn it, see if it's for you, see if you might wanna try something else. Most of the features and techniques that you are gonna learn here will transfer over to all the other 3D CAD programs. But that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I started messing with Fusion 360 because I have a future video coming up where I did need to design my components in 3D so I could go send them off to get laser cut. And I just thought this was such a great piece of software for being able to try it out for a year for free. I really just wanted to share it with everybody and give a brief rundown. But let me know if you'd like to see more videos on Fusion 360. And if you're new to this channel, like I said earlier, I hope you stick around and subscribe, like this video, leave me a comment down below on more things maybe you would want to see. And I'll see you guys in the next one.